God is not going to push you away when you, when you ask for forgiveness. Bear everything to Him tonight. You see, the worst thing for us is to, to, to pretend in church. The worst thing for us is to pretend that, that we, we, we've got everything together. The best thing we can do is to lay bare before the Lord everything that's in your heart. Be honest with God. Be truthful before the Lord. Here I am, Lord, naked before you, God. Here I'm standing before you. You know everything that's already going on. We like Adam and Eve in the garden. We try to hide away under the leaves. We try, we're naked already. God already knows what's going on in your life. But for some reason, because no one else around you can see it, you try and hide it. But God can see it. And so there's no use hiding from the Lord, which He already knows is in your mind and in your heart and what you're busy with in your life. And so the Lord wants to set you free from that. Amen. And so tonight we're going to trust Him for this. It says here in verse, verse 8, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. Do you hear that? The thoughts of God is nothing like our thoughts. Wow. Says the Lord, And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. My thoughts are... Not your thoughts. My ways are, are way beyond what you can imagine. Can you, how many of you have got great imaginations? You can imagine great things, eh? And I said to you right now, don't think of an elephant, Shelley. Was there an elephant in your mind? Yeah, of course there was. <laughs> when I said the word elephant, and your imagination came up, zoop, there was an elephant. Can you see the elephant's got pink tackies on, Melissa? Can you see he's got fluttering little wings on the back? Huh? Can you see that? Can you see that he's got some blue polka dots on him? Eh? And when you start coloring in this elephant, can you see that his toenails are painted? Huh? <laughs> Amen. And so our imagination is an amazing thing that God has given us. And God says his ways, what God can do is way above what you can even imagine. And that's awesome. I don't know about you, we can imagine wonderful things, we can form things in our mind, but God says, I, my ways are even more wonderful than your imagination, whatever you can imagine, I can do greater than that. Can you imagine that every person in this building walks out healed tonight? Can you imagine that? God can do better than that even. He can even heal the neighbors next door. Do you see what I'm saying? Like we limit God to what we can see, what we can taste, what we can hear with these ears. But God said already tonight in the scripture, open your ears. Open your eyes. Begin to see what I want you to see. Begin to trust the way I want you to trust. Become a child again in my kingdom. Believe the way that I want you to believe. A child like faith. One that will believe God. When God says it's going to happen, it will happen. If it's in the word of God, Kevin, it will happen. We need to trust it and believe it. And listen to this. He says, For just as, verse 9, the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. The rain and the snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. Isn't that powerful? I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. We've got two more verses. You will live in my joy and peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song. And the trees of the fields will clap their hands, devil. <laughs> trees of the fields will clap their hands. Trees of the... All the old assembly of God people. We go forth with joy. <laughs> Trees of the fields will clap their hands. I grew up with those songs. I'm not going to dance. We need a tambourine because that's what used to be on the stage those days. And the people used to clap their hands in between. There's a t I cannot play the tambourine. There's always a lady that plays the tambourine for some reason, not a guy. <laughs> but those were, you know what was great about those times is that everybody participated in the song and everybody was understanding the scripture of the song and it was powerful and today I think sometimes people lack the depth of the scripture and the depth of the meaning of the songs because sometimes songs can lead you into a weird direction and you don't even know where it's going and what it means you're just singing because it sounds like and the drums are going for it Nothing, no offense Manny <laughs> but uh, you know what, it's so much greater and deeper when you actually understand what you're singing. 
We used to sing these songs, and this is one of them that used to talk about the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Where once there were thorns and cypress trees will grow, where nettles grew, myrtles will sprout up. The events will bring great honor to the Lord's name. They will be an everlasting sign of His power and love. It is the same with God's word. Just as the rain comes to the earth, as we read in verse 11, He sends out His word. God sends His word out. God sends His word out. He sent Jesus to the earth. Amen. God sends His word out. The word sent by God. Where's the word come from? From God. If it's God's word, it's authority. If it's God's word you're standing on, something will happen. If it's God's word you believe in, that is what will sustain you. If it's God's word that you speak over something, it will create something. It will create what God sent it out to accomplish. And God says He looks over His word, He watches that His word will accomplish that which He sent it out to accomplish. Isn't that powerful? If I sent you with an instruction, I said to you, Gordon, go down to the shop, get me a milk, a bread, five Simba chips, must be chutney, what other flavors? Salt and vinegar, beef, cheese and onion, Mexican. Here we go. Okay, Gordon, I gave you specific instruction. Which Simba chips would you go get? <laughs> milk, bread, Simba chips, water, chappies. Do you still, still sell chappies at the shop? <laughs> okay. But now I'm going to look over. If you come back and I, and I see you left something off the list, I'm going to say, Gordon, you didn't get the salt and vinegar chips. You left them off the list. It's sold out. <laughs> you see, but this doesn't happen with God. It says here in the Scripture that God looks over His Word to see that it will accomplish, which He sent it out to accomplish. In other words, if God can't find the faith here in, in, in Drago, He'll go to Devolt and says, Devolt, will you please go get the chips? Because, you know, obviously Gordon's not listening, and he's got excuses that it's out of stock and all kinds of stuff. But there's no stock limitations in heaven. There's no petrol, there's no, uh, no load shedding in heaven. Huh? <laughs> there's no power shortage in heaven. Like, Oh, the angels stopped working because there's darkness. It doesn't work in heaven like that. There's a power supply that never ends. The Bible says there's a, there's a river that flows from the throne of God, and it's a never-ending river that flows. There's light in heaven. There's gold in heaven. <laughs> the presence of God. The perfect will of God. Amen. There's peace, joy. Love, overflowing, everything, perfect earth. Hmm. God is so good, amen. And there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no inflation. <laughs> there's none of that stuff. No load shedding, they said it. ESCOM doesn't, the Ministry of Darkness doesn't operate there. <laughs> amen. But there's strength for everything. And God looks over His Word, and I'm, I'm serious tonight when I say that He will also look over who's going to accomplish His Word, who's going to step out on His Word, who's going to speak when I speak, move when I move, do what I do. You see, Jesus said something very powerful in the Scriptures. He said, I do only what I see my Father doing in heaven. Do you understand that statement, that it was a connection? Jesus was saying, I see the Father doing something in heaven, and I accomplish that same thing. The day before Jesus started praying for the sick that day, He saw the Father already doing it in heaven. Before Jesus multiplied the bread, He saw His Father in heaven multiplying the bread. You see, everything we do comes from heaven. Every blessing, everything that we do comes from the spiritual realm. You see, there can be evil from the spiritual realm, or there can be good. And so we need to be connected to God so that we can see what the Spirit is showing us to do. And so the Spirit has given us instruction into the Word. And the Word says, preach the gospel. Go and make disciples of all nations. Feed the poor, the hungry, the forgotten, the orphan, the widow. Look after them. This is pure religion. Do not be defiled by the world. I mean, all this stuff, the Bible tells us already, and the Spirit will enable us to do these things if we will be obedient to step out, the Word will be accomplished, which God sent it out to accomplish. Salvation, healing, deliverance, blessing, overflow, 
all that stuff will follow if we are faithful and have faith in the Word of God. That's why the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Word produces faith. If you have a lack of faith tonight, tell the person next to you, you need more Word. Are you struggling in your faith a bit tonight? If you're struggling in your faith a bit tonight, tell the person next to you, you need more Word. Word in, faith out. Word in, faith out, Casey. Word in, faith out. <laughs> Word in, faith out. <laughs> Amen. This is like breathing. It's like when the Word comes in, what comes out of your breath is faith. What comes out of your mouth is faith. When you fill your life with the Word of God, faith comes out. And God looks over His Word that it will accomplish which He sent it out. And it will prosper. The Bible says that it will prosper everywhere it goes. I send it. Everywhere the Word is, there will be prosperity. I don't have many amens on that one. I suppose you don't want prosperity. I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about every area of your life to prosper in relationships, in everything. Your soul must prosper. You see, Paul had a very great secret. He said, I am, I am content with little and I'm content with much. I've learned to be content, he says. Actually, I've learned to be content. Are we learning to be content when we have little much? Little doesn't always mean that you're cursed. Little doesn't always mean that God's not with you anymore. Little might mean that you're learning something. Little might mean that God's testing you. Animariara. The times when you don't have. The thin times. The bleak times. The desert seasons as we call them. The winter seasons as we call them. You know when there's snow? Underneath there there's little growth going still. See, there's depth happening there. There's still growth going deeper. The roots are still underground. Amen? God wants to teach you something through that. And so God looks over His Word. So we're going to pray tonight with one another as well. How many of you are ready to pray? So, 1 Peter 1 verse 23 to 25 says, speaks about the born again. 1 Peter 1. Verse 23 says, For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living Word of God. As the Scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is like a flower in the field. The grass withers and the flowers fades. But the Word of the Lord remains forever. And that Word is the good news that was preached to you. Is that powerful? Wow, I love the way this is a New Living Translation. It says in the beginning, for you have been born again. Anyone born again here? Maybe many people said, what does the word born again mean? Do I go back into my mother's womb? Nicodemus? No, you don't. But not to a life that will quickly end. It's eternal life. You've been born again in the Spirit, that you may live a life that never ends. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living Word of God. I love that. As the scriptures say, people will wither their outside, their beauty, their flesh will go. Bless you. But the word of the Lord remains forever. God's word will remain forever. That's why there's eternal life in his word. Amen. That which Christ accomplished, he was resurrected from the dead on the third day. Resurrection power is inside of you. Even there at the back, Letitia, Chris. <laughs> Amen. It's inside of you, resurrection power. You live forever because of the word of God that was spoken to you, the gospel that was preached to you. Number three, the word heals. Huh? Sandy, did you experience that the word heals tonight? Psalm 107 verse 20. Let's go to Psalm. How many of you know the psalmist speaks about this? Psalm 107. One oh six. 107. One oh seven verse twenty says, He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. 
Isn't that powerful? God sends His word forth to heal. God sends His word forth to heal. Snatches them from the door of death. Maybe there's some sickness in your body tonight. God sends forth His word to heal you. He's speaking to you and saying, I will heal you. I will deliver you. I will set you free. 1 Peter 2 verse 24. Part of 1 Peter 2 24 says, By His wounds you have been healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, By His stripes you have been healed. Healed, past tense. It's been done on the cross. Before the cross, in actual fact. Do you know this? Jesus took the stripes upon his body before he went to the cross. How many of you believe that God wants everybody to be saved? Come, let me see some hands. Anybody? Do you believe that God wants the whole world to be saved? There's a hand at the back. I see that hand. Amen, I see those hands. Come on. God wants everybody to be saved. How come you don't believe that God wants people to be healed? That's not a blessing from the Lord. Does he not say in his word he wants to heal? Does he not want to heal? I believe many times we don't have faith for it. We excuse it because the people don't want to be healed. You know, there's something still blocking them from being healed. But the word of God is very clear. He sent forth his word by his stripes. Do you know that this is the only basis that you can pray for healing for by his stripes? By his stripes. It's not faith in your faith for healing. It's by His stripes. You have to trust in the Word of God. You have to trust that the Word is truth. And the minute that you believe that the Word is truth and it speaks the truth, you can speak that healing now because your faith is not in how much faith you have for healing. Your faith in is how much He's accomplished for healing. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. Sometimes we try and work up the faith. You don't have to. It's in the Word. It says the truth is there already. It should work when you speak the Word. If you have faith in the Word of God, because it says by His stripes, you have been healed. I almost called you on your mother's name now. I said Eunice. Isn't that amazing, eh? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I just had a thought of your mother now when I was looking at you there. Hey, faithful to the church, eh? Loved it, yeah. Yeah. 107, Psalm 107 verse 20. And lastly, the word delivers. The word delivers. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 to 9. I want to read it to you quickly. How many of you know what this is? And we're going to close with a scripture then. And then we're going to pray. Are you ready to pray? I notice that the Bible apps on the phone make you lazy to page in your Bible. <laughs> Forgotten how, how tedious it is to page in your Bible. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 to 9. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. It's amazing. So here it says, right there in the beginning it says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. Walking around. It doesn't say he is a roaring, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Don't get isolated when you're going through a tough time. You know what a, what a lion does? He isolates the weak from the, from, the, from, the, from the pack. When they're running, when the herd is running, you'll see the weak one at the back, the slow one, the fat one, the broken leg one, the young one, the screaming one. What? The back say, there, you see there? There's the weak one. He's isolating him. And see what happens is when you isolate yourself from, from the body, you become negative. You become heavy, you become, you become a lot of things. And that's why I encourage people, don't stay away too long. You become isolated and the enemy plays with your head because you, now you're sitting with only your own thoughts. No one else can challenge you. You don't have Julius to challenge you now. I don't mind challenging. There's other people that will challenge you too because now it's iron sharpening iron in church. Whoa, cool. Huh. 
It's personalities. You've got to work with personalities in church. It's a toughest thing about church. Tani so and so. Wimpy so and so. Oh, yeah. They like sandpaper. <laughs> you know what sandpaper's job is to make you smooth? That's the job of sandpaper. So the more you learn to work with the personalities, the smoother you're getting. Huh. Thank you. I'm starting to look like Jesus. Yeah, because you have to have grace for different personalities in church. We're not all the same. We're not all patient. We're not all impatient. We're not all joyful all the time. Some people can smile naturally. Some people have a very awkward smile. <laughs> it's, it's like that. On people, people. Some people you think, why do they never smile? Because have you seen their smile? You don't know if they're ready to kill. It's like, it's like okay. Uh, it reminds me of my kids. Some of my kids were natural smilers. Others like really struggled. Eh? Smile for the photo. Caleb, you remember those days? Caleb, you should just look at the photo. <laughs> Caleb, smile for the photo. And all the teeth comes out because it's not a natural thing for him to smile when he was young. Now he smiles, but I mean when he was young, he didn't know how to bring that smile out. Other kids again from young. <laughs> We're not all day a happy child. It's not like the child you see, like you, you think the one's happy. No, it's not, a, it's not about that. But sometimes we judge people on that. We shouldn't, you know. You should know we have different people in church. Leonard, amen. Leonard, you got a good smile, man. Don't worry. <laughs> amen. God is good.